Hi everyone, it's Adrian Leah. This is going to be a video of me showing some items that I've gotten within the past couple of weeks. I really wanted to talk about another yarn sale that I discovered. I get really happy when I find nice quality yarn for a good price and of course there's so much work that gets put into making the yarn but it's it could also be costly when you want to make a garment and the grams add up so I was so happy when I found this yarn. I am currently knitting one garment, which I've shown. It's the Sepnir cardigan, originally a sweater, but I'm making it into a cardigan. And it's a pattern from the Finnish knitwear designer Jenna Kosket. And I'm focusing on that right now because I finished one of my other projects that was definitely a labor of love, but I enjoyed every minute of making it because I love to knit and I feel like the person that'll be receiving it will enjoy the finished garment too. So I made a video on the garment, the Nuna sweater. I don't have it on me right now because I'm currently blocking it so it's the first day and it's definitely still damp but I'm so happy to finally complete that garment once I get to the body of the slept near. I wanted to do another gift knit because there's a number of things that I want to knit. I tend to focus on one large project at a time. I feel like it might be mm, productive to start maybe a another color work project that'll be a gift knit early on so that by the time the holidays come I won't rush as much but for that I'll show the yarn that I picked out some are newer than others and then there are a couple things here and there from different places like Ikea or Ikea and there was something from Target too and random things so I'll start off with the discounted yarn so I had an early day off of work the other day and I decided to go to this yarn shop that I've never gone to before. It is a larger yarn shop than the other ones that I've been to and it's interesting going to these places because they have their own type of 
way that the shop is, I suppose, because uh, some of them have specific types of yarn. They might have a couple of the workhorse yarns here and there, and maybe the other yarn that they carry that is more specialty to their shop is also a workhorse yarn for some people. But the one that I went to, it was one that carried a lot of brands. Some of them I haven't seen before in person because sometimes I would order them online. So the Rowan I've never seen in person. Then there's a couple of hand dyed. They have a lot of sock yarn there. Like, uh, they have uh, the regia there. And to go on because it's been six minutes in, I'm sorry. I know that I tend to talk and talk about things, and I just. Once you put me in a direction, it's a lot of twists and turns and backwards, forwards, and this and that. But I, eventually I get to what I'm trying to say. There's a discounted section of 70% off, and that's the most that I've seen yarn to be discounted for. So one of the brands that they had is the arts tier and it's a Scottish brand this specific line of their yarn is that they carried is one that they're not making anymore so after that you wouldn't be able to get more and I went there the first time and I got a couple of their hanks, their 50 gram hanks. So originally they were $12 for 60% Highland wool and 40% alpaca. And this is, again, uh, and it's a Scottish yarn, but the yarn was produced in Peru. So the yarn is also inspired by the winter landscape in Scotland and it was with the 70% discount, it went down to 360. So, me being the person that I am, I was thinking the first time, I would just play yarn chicken. I've done it before, and I am I work with what I have, and I'm innovative. I could <laughs> think of something to make it into a garment that I would wear. So the first time I got a couple of hanks, then I went a second time because I was thinking that's an amazing price for the Highland wool and alpaca and it would be a beautiful garment. So then I decided I would get the full quantity that I needed and a little extra and not to give the pattern away because I'm going to make another birth of the world cardigan originally a sweater and again by um, Jenna Kosket so that one is the one that has the birds and the one that I have knitted is purple with black so this one is uh, more on the softer side, but it has such a, it, it looks rich and it looks 
mystical, I would say, and that really goes with how I envision the winter landscape in Scotland. So I'm sorry, I keep rambling and I haven't shown anything. I would like to think that I'm a storyteller. But the first time that I went, I just got a couple of the Kintra, which is this colorway. It's more like a mauve color. This is the tag. The first Breath of the World cardigan that I made is three quarter length sleeves, but I extended the sleeves because I didn't have a lot of the main color, so I added the contrast color back to do the ribbing on the sleeves to elongate it, and I was happy with that. This will be the main color. And then I got a contrast color. This is the ever, sorry, the, the fire more. I love the colors together. They blend. So effortlessly. But you'll see a contrast when I knit the yoke. And with the amount of yarn that I got for this project. So this is one bag. I have them in two bags. I saved over a hundred dollars for this yarn and I just am so excited to start the project. Of course, I love this designer's patterns. It's, they're not the only ones that I've knit up. And I did a test knit for her a couple of months ago for a sock. And then I did her mittens, which I got the yarn set of the Rumagarn with the Rumagarn yarn, which I love too. And that was also, that was in one of her, well, the, her book, Kelvala. And there, she made an announcement a couple of weeks ago, not too long ago at all, that she'll have another book coming out with Lana and when I heard that I was just so eager to knit all the things from her first book because he, it's the book is just the type of knitting that I love it has to do with lore and stories and I love the nature inspired patterns with the animals and the different plants that you knit when you're knitting her patterns and even uh, in that region the symbols being more symbolic in the knitting so 
I'm so excited and I always look out for if she does the test knits. I know that she had a sweater test knit, but I was focusing on a garment at the time, so I didn't do that. I did the sock because I felt that I would definitely get it done in a decent pace and I would still be able to be productive with the other garments that I have that I had uh, at the time yeah. and this bag has the other yarn of the colors with the contrast. I did get one more hang of the art here because one of the main reasons why I went to that why I planned on going to the that yarn store is because I wanted to get more contrast colors because I do have a lot of yarn that is for the main color but at times I feel that I could put more contrast yarn in there too but I I, I use the I wouldn't say it, it's more of nature or earthy colors that I like to use and that's the palette I go for so I tend to have an idea of what I'm looking for. The, the hank that I got is a light green and the name looks like it's in Scottish Gaelic because the yarn is Scottish Gaelic for Highland this, this is the colorway right here they're so soft and <laughs> it's a squishy yarn it's more of a it says heavy worse than Iran the other contrast colors were more specific so this is going to be a yarn that I would put in a free pattern. It's the unit off of the Universal Yarn website. It's a poncho. It goes past your elbows. I'm probably going to crop it. Or if anything, I would put holes where my arms would go. But I don't think I'll do that. I would like it just around here and this is one of the contrast colors that it recommended sometimes I go with a completely different palette and then other times I go with um, something that is closer to the original so they had the porcelain colorway as the main color at the time that I was there. They actually were getting a shipment the next day when I wasn't going to be there because someone ordered some, which was completely okay because I wasn't going to cast on that project until I was finished the next two garments anyway. I'm probably well into 
November, I would say. So, and that's to say that I won't have other giftnets, but I have a couple in mind that I really want to knit with in this holiday because I didn't knit many gift knits last year. So, trying to get more of a, a schedule going with my knitting, but it's also balancing the personal knitting that so I would enjoy the the craft of it and then I have a, another universal yarn they're both the tweed but this one is the DK tweed this one is the worsted tweed in the cloud blue and when I saw this color I just kept getting more and more drawn to it I have a project in mind for it so it's the floaty from the book that I showed in another video with the snakes on the yoke and then there was there was gold at the bottom of the yoke and at the places where there's before the ribbing and when I saw that pattern I knew that I wanted to do it as a gift knit and it it's uh, more of a DK to worsted, that's what it was saying, and then it gives you the gauge for it with the children's and adult sizes. So in general, I try to match up the, the weights of the yarn, but if I am more open to mixing in, matching the weights, I would do the weights that are next to each other, so maybe sport with DK or DK with worsted, so that whole explanation was to talk about the flow tea, because I wanted to use this in the yoke as more of the background, and I say that the yoke reminds me of painting because it's like you have a canvas especially if you have a, a beige or lighter background to make the patterns show as vividly as you would like or if you would like it to blend together a little more but I am going to use this for the floaty, and I love the tweed in here. I have always loved tweed, but I haven't knit a lot of it, and so, uh, and I love the universal yarn tweed too. I, the universal yarn is super bouncy. I really enjoy working with it. And the other colors for the floaty are ones that I've had for a long time in my stash. <laughs> so this one specifically is one that I have been waiting to use because it's a special alpaca yarn and I do have an alpaca section on one of the shelves. I don't go into it often because I save the yarn for specific things. So this one is special because I got it from my friend who goes to the fairs and festivals and sells different types of products and supplies 
that are fiber related and I went to her farm where she opened up one of her trailers because she was because the at the time one of the festivals was coming up so she was preparing for that and then she has another part of her farm where she keeps most of the supplies too and this is one of the friends that taught me how to spin so I enjoyed going there and it was so fun driving around in the golf cart around the farm with the dogs um, tagging along oh. this is 300 grams of the alpaca and whenever I feel alpaca I just love feeling how soft it is and the other this would be the main color the contrast color for the gold I was particular with it as I am with many things I wanted it to be bold enough for a contrast but not so bright. So I was looking in my stash and this is one that I have had for over a year. It's a Queensland tweed and this is also a worsted. This is a discontinued yarn but I've heard many good things about this line specifically especially from the owner of the shop that I used to go to where she she closed the shop down because she wanted to travel more with her husband when he was deployed so I'm ecstatic that she gets to venture off into different places. So I got this there and there's more tweed on it, which I love because it does give it a softer look to the yarn. So, definitely going to be knitting that. And this is from another shop, but it was from a couple weeks ago. It's uh, 50 grams of the wool stock. Because I did want to try wool stock, I have heard amazing things about how soft the yarn is and it is true the yarn is super soft so this is at another yarn shop where this yarn shop is definitely more of the I would say expensive yarn and it really focuses on knitting and sewing so there's a sewing section in the back of this of that store and then the most recent store that I went to they had a lot of needlepoint and embroidery there too so that was another part of their specialty that they do there and this one Woolstock Worsted Blue Sky Fibers and the color is in Northern Lights
I went to Ikea because I was looking at the storage. I wasn't sure if I was going to get storage because I don't want to add too much to my space. There is a lot of storage here. I recently received more herbs and I feel that herbs always find their way back to me because I gave most of my herbs away because I had so many of them that I knew that I wasn't going to get to them because I've had them since college and I it was given to me when I was taking my college courses in herbal studies and so I was happy that the person was able to use the herbs and they a lot of them were sealed then recently we were rearranging the OTC products and the owner was asking if I wanted to take home the herbs uh, that <laughs> that we had so I said yes I'm super grateful to have them they're in the jars and it's Frontier and Mountain Rose herbs I wanted to make some different skin products with them and so I'll be doing that and I'll talk about my progress but I wasn't sure where I was going to put them. Right now they're in front of my bed, which is okay for now. I don't think that the setup would change that much if I were to change it. But I got other things in the as is or the sales section. I was talking to one of the technicians and she was saying that thrifting isn't a thing here because when I was up north especially in New England they have the best thrift stores and I used to go on Craigslist so much I'm looking at the bookshelf that I got from Craigslist because at the time I wanted a round table for my apartment and when I got to the place the people left the furniture out and they had a note saying that we have this bookshelf if you want to take it and I love bookshe bookshelves so I took it and then on the bookshelf like 80% of the books uh, were given to me by another person that was up in New England she wanted to downsize the amount of metaphysical books books that she had so she gave me so many books and I still have them to this day and the things that I've thrifted at Savers so many nice things that you could get secondhand I I still have a even just looking um right here I have a a deer statue that I got from Savers um this jewelry shelving thing that I got from Savers and then another jewelry box back there in the cubes and one of the technicians that moved she gave me the, the cubicle thing so and the little bits and the, the knickknacks that I love are are on the shelf too and even my best friend that's in New England, she, we, we have this discussion and 
I love New England. I think about it when I wake up. I think about it when I fall asleep. And I feel that it's important to have those fond, happy memories because it helps your soul be at peace and especially at the times where things may not be the happiest times for you. You have those memories that you think of and it really soothes the soul. So I was given the message that the next place that I moved to, I have seen before and I had a vision of the roads and the roads are like this. So it looks like it's not a place that is super close to where I'm at, but I've definitely journeyed a lot in the past decade, so it wouldn't be that new. And I was also joking with my best friend because she was saying that you should own your own um, moving company because the, the amount of times that I've moved, and I have, I guess, tips and tricks on how you can move in efficient ways. I'm not sure. They're probably pretty universal and things that people think about, but I'm pretty quick with moving. So it's something that I've been accustomed to, but it would be nice to have at least the home base to uh, the place to go back to and yeah I've been thinking about seagulls and water which is not the most usual thing because I'm not the most uh, drawn to those types of areas but I do love seagulls there's this sorry I'm rambling this Netflix series it's Watership Down and I love that series it's one of my favorites it's animated and it has rabbits and it's an English series one of the characters though is Kahar and he's a seagull and he does have an Irish accent and I I love the depth that the personalities have and it's more dark than what you would think because a lot of times when you have the, these types of animals they usually have more of like a, a bubbly or a happy setting and it's not that it doesn't have its ha happy moments but it has some gloom to it too and it has um, again depth and darkness and then you have uh, the personalities are so well developed and so vivid and present that when you look at these characters on the screen you think that there's there's more to their story and you have more of like a clarity of the type of person personality or um, look within their their personality it, in a way I was gonna say like the depths of <laughs> their soul but it's a little much but they do have so much in in these characters one of them being Bluebell who's the storyteller and just different things that this story has that they're based off it's based off of a book I haven't read the book it's usually either or with me I either read the book or I watch the movie I don't usually do both I did that once and then what ended up happening is that I kept comparing the what the book said and to what the movie was showing me so I uh, it's definitely whatever you would want to do but I, 
at Ikea, I did get a bowl there because I have one, at the time, one mixing bowl, and then I was okay with that, but I figured that another bowl and a, a different size I could mix batter in or different types of meals could go in there to when I'm making them. I made bagels today and I thought they turned out great. So there I think I'm going to take some for lunch because I did want to make some take some things for lunch. <laughs> And so I didn't show what I got. I don't have the bowl on me, but I have these bottles. I wanted to make, oh, sorry, sorry, more things at home. I wanted to make juice and in the places that I've worked at, we did make different types of juice whether it was me bartending or being a barista in some way I usually had something to make so I wouldn't be making alcoholic drinks but one of them I wanted one of them to be filled with juice and this is part of their I believe they're Vinter Best line. These were only a dollar. And the other one, I use lemons for some of my meals and for baking. So the other one I wanted to squeeze out the remaining of the lemon and have lemon water. I don't have a filter for my water for tap, so at the very least I'll boil it or do other things to purify it. Then at Target, it was mainly for the cat food, but I did see something else on sale. Did I need it? No. But I saw it. It's from the Hearth and Hand with Magnolia. This is a wood toaster set. And it's Share the Joy. It's never too early to inspire your kids' imagination in the kitchen. And this beautifully crafted set is a great way to get them excited at an early age. Hopefully it won't be long before they'll be bringing you breakfast in bed. So, it has four pieces of butter, two pieces of toast, one toaster, one plate, one butter knife, one butter dish, and a dish cover. And I love these wooden sets or things to display or the wooden toys. I remember when I was watching Melody of Mandarins, the French knitwear designer, she got Little Iris this kitchen set. It's a different appliance with what you do, but I love the the <laughs> wood toys so I felt like it reminded me of when she got little iris that so I opened it and this is the toaster this will go where my cookbooks are, so I do have them underneath the one of the shelves sections underneath the TV. 
and I was thinking about rearranging my academic shelf, which is on the other side. That's where I was thinking of putting the herbs, but then I would have to move my books. So I I think I will it, I'll eventually rearrange them accordingly. So this is the plate with the bread. Sorry, I was weaving in the ends for the new Nuna. And the, oops, sorry. The toast has the Velcro on it. This is the knife. And the butter. The butter also has the Velcro on them too, and it's so sweet. You could put the mm, the toast with the butter. Like that. <laughs> or put the toast in the toaster. And I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. I knew it was going to be more of a display, but this is fun to work or play with. Then it has the dial here too, if that's called a dial on a toaster. So it's so sweet and I'll put it back to where I had it, but I'll end the video here because I I'm almost at an hour and sometimes that I live in a more hit more historical or older area where the power lines aren't as updated so Sometimes it takes longer to upload than other times, but I, I try to keep it a little short, or I, although I talk so much, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this was interesting, and I'll see you in another video.